Hi everyone, let me give you a quick overview of the mobile automation capabilities of the UiPath test suite. To do that, let me switch to Studio Pro, our most advanced IDE for automation here at UiPath. Now in Studio Pro, I opened a project called the UiPath Banking App, and in that project I already prepared a mobile automation for you. It's called Login User, and this mobile automation just represents an automated test case that performs some automated actions as well as verifications on a mobile device. Now, how does such a mobile automation look like? Well, when I scroll down slowly here, you see that a mobile automation in Studio Pro doesn't look so much different to any other type of automation in Studio Pro, such as a web automation or a desktop automation or even a mainframe automation. So now let's see how we can create such a mobile automation. Well, all we need to do is we need to navigate to the ribbon, click on mobile automation, and then we can open the so-called mobile device manager. And here you go, that's the mobile device manager. And this mobile device manager, as the name suggests, not only helps you to manage your mobile devices, it also helps you to manage your mobile applications. So in that mobile device manager, as you can see, I already configured three mobile devices. Now let's uh, go to the configuration page of one of these devices to see what it takes to configure such a device. Well, all it takes is you need to give it a name and you need to specify the URL to your device. Or to be more precise, you need to specify the URL to your Apium server where your device is hosted. And this tells us two things. First of all, it tells us that we are using Apium as the basis of our mobile automation. And Apium is an open source framework. It's pretty much the standard, the best of breed or the best in class, so to say, for mobile automation. Secondly, all this tells us that we support all types of devices. So we do not really care what type of device it is and where this device is being hosted. So this device might be an emulator or it might be a real device, a physical device hosted by some cloud device or some provider. In that case, it's Source Labs. But it can also be Browser Stack or Experitest, for example. Now, this device can also be a physical device in your local device farm, or it can be a physical device that, that you just attached to your local machine via USB in case you have your Apium server running on your local machine. Now, that's basically it. That's all you need to do to configure a mobile device in the mobile device manager. Now, let's save and close this. And you will see in a second that this also holds true for your mobile applications. As you can see here, I've configured three mobile applications. Again, let's take a look at the configuration of such a mobile application. Again, just give it a name and then specify what type of mobile application it is. So in case it's a native application on Android, just specify the APK. That means the URL to your APK file. In that case, you see that this uh, mobile application is somewhere stored in our blob storage on our Asia platform. In case it's a native application on iOS, all you need to do is to specify the URL to your IPA file. And in case it's a web application, just specify the URL to your web application. The bottom line here is we support all types of applications that are native applications on Android, native applications on iOS, web applications or hybrid applications. Now let's save and close this. In order to start an application on a certain mobile device, just click here on start application, select your mobile device. I'll go for my Samsung Galaxy S9 and then I can connect to this device. Now what happens now is we spin up a fresh device in the cloud in that case, we download the application and install that application on that freshly deployed device. And all this happens in that case in the cloud because I'm using a cloud hosted device. So now let me briefly show you how such a cloud device farm provider looks like. And let me navigate here to my Source Labs account. Now Source Labs, by the way, is our strategic partner when it comes to mobile automation. Now, if you go to the Live tab here in Source Labs, click on cross pause and then navigate to Mobile Real, you will see on the page all the different mobile devices Source Labs as any other cloud device farm provider provides to you. And all these devices such as iPhones, Samsung Galaxies, Nokia phones, Motorola's, iPads or even Amazon Kindles, as you can see here, all these devices are just waiting for you to be used for your mobile automation endeavor. 
Now let's go back to my mobile device manager. And as you can see, we already established the connection to my mobile device. Now I said, this mobile device runs somewhere in the Source Lab Scout. But the cool thing here is we can interact with that device on our local machine in real time. So let me show you that. Let me click here on, for example, this login screen label. Now what then happens, I will be redirected to the login screen. And here I can interact with all different buttons and UI controls in my mobile application. So let me enter now here my username. So I just perform a tap operation in that field. Then I can use these buttons here to send a text to this field, like I'm using my name. I just send send the text. Then we are performing the set text operation. And you will see in a second, here you go. My name has just been populated to that field. Now next to that, you can also interact with all hardware buttons of that device. Now in that case, I'm using an Android phone. So I can interact with the Android back button with the Android Home button, with the Android Switch Apps button, or I can also change the orientation of my mobile device. I can refresh my mobile device. I can save a screenshot among having a very rich set of functionality here in the Mobile Device Manager. Now, on top of that, all the actions I've just performed have been automatically been recorded. Now, how cool is that? And now I can use this set of recorded actions to create my mobile automation in Studio Pro. Now let me show you how we do that. Let me collapse here my mobile device manager and let me go back to Studio Pro. Now to import those recorded actions, just create, for example, here a sequence. And now I say, well, I want to now import all my recorded actions to this sequence. How do I do that? Well, I go to mobile automation, click on import recorded actions and boom, bang, pow, all these mobile automations have been populated into that sequence. Now that is how easy it is to create mobile automation here in Studio Pro. Now that's one way you can create mobile automation. Now the second way is to make use of our powerful mobile automation activities. How do you do that? Well, just go to the activities panel, then go to the search bar and uh, type in mobile. And then you can see we provide a variety of different mobile automation activities to you. Mobile activities for logging and debugging purpose, mobile automation activities for helping you to manage your mobile applications, for managing your mobile device, and a variety of so-called UI automation related mobile activities, such as, for example, swipe, set text, or tap operations. Now, in order to use that, just drag and drop those uh, activities into your designer panel. In that case, I'm using a tap operation. And I can say, well, I want to now perform a single tap, a double tap, or a long tap operation. Then I can specify the target. That means the control in my mobile application. So when you click on that, you will be redirected to the mobile device manager, and then you can select the control. You want to perform this action. So I'm selecting here this login button. I confirm it. And here you go. We've just created a mobile automation. And that is how easy it is to create mobile automation here in Studio Pro. Now, the next step, of course, is to execute that mobile automation. So let's do that. In order to execute that automated test case that performs some automated actions as well as verifications on a mobile device, all you need to do is you need to click here on Run File. Now what then happens, Studio minimizes, and then we kick off the execution of that automated test case somewhere in the Source Lab Scout in our case. So, and the cool thing is you can also see that execution happening in real time. Now let me show you how that looks like. Well, let me go back to my Source Labs account, and then you can navigate to the section Automated. You can click on Test Results. And this section takes a couple of seconds to load. You see that there are already two jobs running. The first one is the one that represents the mobile device manager, and this one here that represents the execution of my test case. Now, as you will see in a second, you will see the test case execution in real time here in Source Labs. So we spin up that device, we install the application, and then we perform all the actions we described previously in our mobile automation in Studio Pro. So in that case, we log in with a user Emerald Co. in that case. Then we provide some password, and then we click on the login button in that test case, and then we verify this alert message. Then we click OK, and then we go back to the start page of this mobile application. Now, that's basically what this task is, is about. So you can even kick off the execution of a mobile automation that is happening 
in the cloud within Studio Pro on your local machine. And so when you go back here in Studio Pro, you will immediately see in the output panel whether the, your verifications you have specified in your mobile automation passed or failed. And that's it. That's all I wanted to share with you. That's the short story of mobile automation in Studio Pro.